Hi everybody, I'm Chef Scott and this is Devil's Food Kitchen. Today we are making the oh so classic brownie and frosting them with chocolate ganache. A link to the printable recipe is in the description below as well as links to the special equipment I'm using in today's recipe. I begin the recipe by prepping my cake pan, or in this case, a cake frame. I prefer using frames because products can be a definite pain to remove cleanly and easily from a pan with the bottom. If you use a frame like this one, I like to add a piece of tape to the corners to keep any batter from spilling out during baking, although they make frames that don't require this step. If you're using a cake pan with a bottom, spray the inside with baking spray and add a piece of parchment paper to the bottom of the pan. I'm spraying my frame and then using a silpat. Sift the powdered sugar before getting started and reserve it to use later. We're also going to combine and sift the flour, baking powder, and cocoa powder. And last, make sure that your eggs are at room temperature. Melt the chocolate and cocoa paste gently. I prefer using the microwave, heating at full power in 30 second increments and stirring in between heating. For those wondering, cocoa paste is commonly known as baker's chocolate and is 100% cocoa solids. Add the melted chocolates to your mixing bowl, then melt the butter and add that as well. Next, add the sugar, powdered sugar, salt, and vanilla, and mix until thoroughly combined, about two to three minutes. Give the bowl a thorough scrape and another 30 seconds to one minute of mixing before the next step. Add the eggs in a few additions, mixing well between each addition. Full emulsification is really important in this step to get the best result. Add the sifted dry ingredients in three additions, mixing slowly until just incorporated with each addition. Empty the batter into the cake frame. An offset spatula is the best tool to get the batter evenly spread. Start by working the batter to cover the surface of the pan, then run the spatula against each wall of the frame to even the batter out. Placing the tip of the spatula against the frame helps stability. At the end of the process, using two hands on the spatula for a final pass will create a nice, even surface. This recipe calls for glucose, which can be messy to measure out. I've seen lots of strategies for doing this over the years, and I prefer using a spatula and building the glucose up using a twirling motion, just like spaghetti on a fork. Combine the heavy cream and glucose and bring it to just a simmer, then pour the hot heavy cream over the chocolates and let the mixture sit for a minute or two. Hand blend or whisk until the chocolate is fully melted and incorporated. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfectly mixed at this stage because we'll blend one more time before we're done. Let the ganache sit until cooled to 30 to 32 Celsius or 86 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I place a thermometer into the ganache and then cover with plastic wrap to touch, which prevents a skin from forming on the surface. Once cooled, add the room temperature butter and salt, then hand blend thoroughly until well emulsified. Let the ganache set in the refrigerator for several hours up to overnight. After an overnight cooling, remove the cake frame and silpat or parchment paper from the brownies and replace with a clean sheet of parchment paper. 
Pull the ganache from the refrigerator and allow it to come to room temperature. Then spread it over the brownies using the same technique as spreading the brownie batter. I like to add a ripple texture to the surface of the ganache using the tip of a small offset spatula and gently moving back and forth over the ganache with light pressure. Then it's into the fridge again for about 10 to 15 minutes to let the ganache firm up before cutting. Transfer the brownies to a cutting board. I always use the same process when cutting a sheet of product and it starts with a tall container of hot water for my knife and a clean towel. My first cut is one short edge of the sheet. It's important to make this cut as straight as possible and don't feel like you need to cut it all in one go. I follow this up by cutting one long edge of the sheet, creating as close to a 90 degree angle as I can between the two cut edges. Then I use the two edges as my guide for cutting the rest of the sheet and that keeps everything square. Dip the knife in the hot water and pass it over the towel before each cut to get the best cleanest results. I'm cutting these about two inches square but of course the size is up to you. After some experience you may not need a ruler to make these cuts but feel free to use one if precision is your game. This is the sort of foundation recipe every baker and cook should have. It's simple to make and always a crowd pleaser. And until next time, I'm Chef Scott. Thanks for watching.